this video is specifically for my culinary fundamentals class and I want to talk a little bit about week one. I know that we're at the beginning of week two but I'm hoping that I can clarify a few things and get some things in motion um, for those people that had questions and they didn't know how to reach me or um, they just didn't know if they um, did week one correctly before they start week two. So today I'm just going to talk about week one and if you pay attention, I'm probably going to give you some answers to some of the questions that you have to turn in. So first, um, just a clarification, when I gave you the note um, and it kind of explained how to connect with me on the Remind app, that's also going to be given to you again. Um, you can also go on to the Crestline Exempted Village School District um, webpage and um, uh, click on my information if you can get to there. And like I said, I just want to clarify a few things and put into motion um, this second week then after this video. All right, so what did I assign you for week one? First of all, um, I did look into um, how many hours you spend with me. So in a three week time period, you spend 11 hours and 15 minutes. I specifically looked at breaking that time frame down so that I was only giving you the amount of work that you would normally have in about a week. And I, I think I did a pretty good job. I know that when you look at it all at once, you're like, oh my goodness, what did Mrs. Bruce do? She gave us like a hundred weeks worth of information, but it's really not that bad. So we're just going to start off with this first week, okay? So I gave you the assignment of reading the chapter about soups, stews, and sauces. And as you know, we've already done some of those things in class. And so I just want to go over some of the reading information. I had uh, somebody say, well, it was kind of light. I couldn't read some of it. So I just want to go over that. And I want to go over how you're going to get your grade in this class. So on week number one, it says that you're going to review this unit and you're gonna do all the questions on 645. Because even though we talked about it and we practiced it in class, um, I didn't give you any vocabulary words or um, questions. Now I know what some of you are thinking. Mrs. Bruce, is that really necessary? And this is why I'm gonna say yes. Um, not only do I think knowing your vocabulary is important and expanding your vocabulary is important, but I've said the words, um, if you know how to read, then you know how to cook. So if you can read a recipe, then you should be able to make it. But the problem with more advanced recipes is that sometimes they use terminology that you're not very familiar with. So I'd like to go over some of that and um, maybe answer some of the questions for you. So when I'm looking at uh, this chapter, which was, um, I want to say chapter 41, um, it started out by telling you the difference between a broth and a stock. So basically, um, a broth is made with bones and meat and vegetables. That makes a broth. And stock is very, very similar, but it doesn't have the meat in it. So you might take a ham bone, okay, um, to flavor like a split pea soup. You don't have a ton of meat on it, not, not that there's not a little bit of meat, but basically you're using the bone um, to flavor the soup. And so that is called a stock. That is the difference between a broth and a stock. Um, one of the ways that I make my um, chicken noodle soup is I take a whole rotisserie chicken and I just put it into a pot. And because there's bones and there's all kinds of crazy, you know, skin and, and um, chicken and veg and I put vegetables in there, um, it just makes a really delicious broth. Um, and then of course I let it cool and I take um, all of those things out, I strain it and I, and I just keep the, the broth and then I add fresh vegetables and um, I, I debone the meat and I put just the meat in. I don't put fat, I don't put skin. Obviously I don't put bones. <laughs> so, um, so that's the difference. All right, the next uh, thing that I wanted to tell you about, so that was not only the vocabulary for broth and stock, 
Um, but it is also, question number two says, explain how to make broth and stock. So you have that answer. Um, the third question is, how are you going to thicken soup? So there's tons of ways that you can thicken soup. Thickening soup, you can um, reduce it. So a reduction is just basically letting a soup or a sauce thicken by letting it cook. So when it's cooking, you can see the steam coming off of the pot. Well, that's just water leaving the sauce or the soup. Well, if water's leaving, then what's left is going to be thicker because it's gonna be less watery, right? So that's one way, you can, you can just cook it longer. Um, I know a lot of times Italian sauces are cooked for like all day. They just, they just cook the sauce and it reduces and you get this really robust flavor and it's delicious, right? All right, another thing that you could do is you could add a grain product. So a grain product would be like macaroni, it could be um, um, like a, a barley, it could be um, flour or cornstarch. Um, and basically, um, you are going to, um, produce what is called gelatinization. And so that's one of the words that you have to know. And gelatinization is the chemical process that takes place as starch thickens. And there's like potato starch and there's tapioca starch. Um, there's different kinds of starches, but, um, basically, um, when starch thickens, that's called gelatinization. And um, then you, of course, remember, um, it says summarize how to make a basic chicken vegetable soup. Um, that would be um, basically you're going to add chicken, um, probably chicken bones and vegetables to water, which after you cook it for a long time is gonna produce a broth. Um, that is going to be very delicious. Then you're going to strain out the um, the bones and the meat and the vegetables that you've used. And then you're going to put fresh vegetables in. Now you're going to say, Mrs. Bruce, why would you put fresh vegetables in? You just got rid of the other vegetables. But what you basically did with the first set of vegetables when you were making your broth is you drained those vegetables of all their nutrients and all of their flavor. Um, if you would eat one of those vegetables, not only are they not gonna be crisp, they're gonna be kind of soggy, um, but all of the goodness, the, the vitamins and the minerals and things are in that broth that you just made. So now you're gonna add fresh vegetables um, so that you can actually get vegetables in the soup. You're gonna add um, the meat so you can debone the chicken or whatever um, and put that in the soup. And um, then you would add the rice. I'm trying to look real quick, what does the question say? Oh, chicken, vegetables. So you don't have to add rice, but definitely vegetables. And, you, and it doesn't have to be hard. I mean, you could use frozen pre-cut vegetables. You could be super easy, or you could take fresh vegetables and wash them and, and, and dice them and, and whatever, um, cut them up um, so that they're bite-sized pieces for your soup. Um, but that's basically how you make a chicken noodle or a chicken soup, vegetable soup, and that's question number four. Um, question um, number five says, how do you make a basic meat stew? Well, the thing that I'm gonna tell you about stew is that, um, well, there's a difference between soup and stew. So soup is when you cook solid foods in a liquid, and with stews, um, it's, it's a lot thicker. So I'm trying to look really quick to see if I can find the, um, the definition for stew. Hang on, stews. And a stew is a dish prepared by stewing or simmering pieces of food in a tightly covered pan. Now there are some liquids in there, but soup definitely has liquid. And sometimes if you eat like beef stew, it could almost be like, well, this isn't a soup at all. This is kind of like vegetables with gravy almost. Um, so it's a lot thicker, more substantial. You might even be able to put a, a stew on a plate um, to eat it, whereas soup, you'd always have to put it in a bowl, right? So you could put stew in a bowl or on a plate, and soup is definitely gonna have to be in a bowl or a mug or a cup or something um, because it's gonna be a lot more liquid. 
Okay, and so it says explain how to make just a basic stew. Um, basically, um, you brown the meat, and um, that's like the first thing. Maybe you take a little oil and you brown the meat. And um, the thing with stew meat is it looks like regular meat, except that a lot of times it's not the best cut. So stew meat a lot of times is like a lower um, grade of meat. Um, it might be harder, chewier, whatever. But if you cook it long enough, it's going to break down those fibers and it is going to be delicious. It's just going to take a little bit of TLC, tender loving care, um, to make it delicious. Okay, so you are... Um, going to add, after you cook that meat, then you're going to add um, some um, sauce or um, you're going to add some vegetables. And again, it could be onions and carrots and celery. That's very common. Um, sometimes with stew, I'm going to tell you this, that um, the chunks are bigger than soup. It's, it's more manly or something. So if you have like vegetable soup um, and, or beef vegetable soup and compared to beef vegetable stew, a lot of times stew vegetables are bigger than soup vegetables. So chunkier or something. Um, and then after you saute the vegetables, you, you prepare the meat, you brown the meat, um, you have sauteed the uh, vegetables. Now you're going to add water and you're going to let it simmer. And when I say simmer, you might cook it for five hours. This is a really good way to use a crock pot because you can put that on after you do the initial. You can put it in a crock pot and cook it all day so that when you get home from work or from school, it is delicious and it's ready to eat. And that meat has had time to tenderize and and um, and the stew has had time to um, flavor itself. Okay, um, all right, so um, explain how to make a basic meat stew. I think that's it. If you, um, if I went too fast or um, you're just like, oh, I, I, you know, maybe she didn't say all the steps. It's on page 641 on the left-hand side. You can copy, it basically says three steps so you don't have to be as lengthy and windy as I am, okay? All right, so the next one is number six, um, and it says describe the six types of sauces, um, and you have a hollandaise sauce, and again, um, okay, so um, a hollandaise sauce is... Um, made by um, eggs, egg yolks, and butter. And a lot of times they um, put it on, it's like creamy and buttery, and they put it on um, like English muffins to make eggs benedict. Um, it's something that I don't make a lot of, so I'm, I'm not super familiar. Um, I don't know that I have ever actually made it, but I think I could make it, right? Um, and then the next one is just a basic white sauce that starts out with a roux. Um, and I think that is one um, word that you should know. It is a French word and it is spelled R-O-U-X. So a lot of times people are like, oh, that's not how you spell roux. Well, if you were French, that is how you would spell roux. And since we get that word from the French, that's how we spell it. All right, so you would start out with a, a roux, and once it gets thick, um, you would add your cream or whatever. And and white sauce is delicious. A lot of people put it over, um, um, like, uh, well, it's it's the beginning of macaroni and cheese, for example. So you make the white sauce, and then you melt the cheese into it, and that makes the macaroni and cheese. Um, but I use a basic white sauce to make like potato soup or, or um, like cream of broccoli soup or something like that. And then you have stock-based sauces. So um, some people call them um, pan or country gravies. And um, basically um, you can reduce it. You can, um, um, you can take like the stock off of like a, a dish to make like a gravy. And, uh, and th it's super easy. Um, and then you have tomato-based so uh, sauces. So that's where we get our spaghetti sauce and our pizza sauce and things like that. Um, tomato-based sauces also could be um, for your like taco um, sauces, like, um, like cooked um, salsa or something like that, okay? 
And then the last one is oil and vinegar sauces. And um, basically it is exactly what it sounds like. And you can add vinegar and garlic and ginger and, and whatever spices that you want. And oil and vinegar sauces a lot of times are on Asian foods like stir fries. So if you wanna look that up and copy that, um, that actually starts on um, page 642, and it goes to 643. So 642, 643, that's where you're going to find um, question number six. All right, and then it says critical thinking. Um, explain the value of knowing how to make broth and stock. So um, how might having this skill save you money? Well, a lot of people would just throw away the bones, right? They would just throw away the ham bone or they would throw away the, the the bone that's in the roast or the chicken bones, right? And we can't eat chicken bones and maybe with beef bones we could give them to our dog, but if you could actually make a soup that is delicious from bones and water and vegetables, then you'd be saving yourself money. You're You're using something that typically a lot of people just throw away. So soup is just a great way to use every bit of the product that you buy. Like if you buy a whole chicken, it's just, it's just a great way to use the entire chicken and to get as much for your money as you possibly can. Um, number eight says, analyze this scenario. The pan gravy that you have made has lumps in it. So what might you have done wrong? Mmm, lumpy gravy. So how could that have happened? Um, what do you think is the cause of lumpy gravy? So we're gonna go back to um, just a few things. So first of all, when you're making a gravy, when you're making a roux, um, you wanna stir, and I use a whisk, um, when I, especially when it's a roux, I use a whisk. Um, some people use spoons or some people use forks, but a whisk is gonna make sure that everything is incorporated and it's gonna get rid of any lumps. The other thing that can happen is that if you use um, cornstarch, it can that can also cause lumps. And I'm trying to see what page that is on. Um, so soups and stews. I'm trying to see where it says that. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to tell me. I thought it was in the thickening part, but um, I'm trying to talk and and whatever. Um, it says, okay, hang on. I found it. It's on page 635 when it's talking about cornstarch. So if you can get to that page and it says unappetizing lumps form if you add flour or cornstarch directly to your hot liquid. So if, um, it says if caught in time, these pasty lumps can be mashed against the sides of the pan or strained out, but to avoid those lumps, so I'm on page 636, it says to make sure that you mix the starch and the cold water first, and the cold water first, and then pour it um, slowly into the hot and stir it with a whisk. So um, make sure that you just don't put cornstarch right into um, like a gravy or sauce. True story, um, a couple years ago, I was, um, I know you can't believe this, but I was talking and um, making cherry pie filling, which is a sauce. Um, I'm gonna actually show you how to do that later on this week. And um, I was talking and I just put the cornstarch right into the cherries that were already heated. And all of a sudden before, I was like, oh, so I tried to strain it out. I tried to heat it. I tried to, it was a mess. I, I really made a mess of it. So um, I, if you do it, you'll just learn from it. Uh, the best of us have made mistakes when we cook. So you just learn from making mistakes. You learn from actually doing it. And I promise I've never done that again. I've never done that since I made that one mistake. Um, okay. The next one is um, number nine, evaluate Trey's plan to serve soup at an outdoor lunch on a 90 degree summer day. What kind of soup would you suggest Trey serve and why? So um, 
The first thing that I'm going to tell you, and you know that I'm like a germaphobe, and we've talked so much about the danger zone. So the danger zone is from 40 degrees to 140 degrees, and 90 degree day is definitely um, on that on that range in that range that danger zone. So I guess I would probably do um, a broth-based soup, and the reason why is because long-term cream-based soups like separate and dairy products are kind of tricky that way. Um, it, dairy is also more temperamental to heat, so I'd probably go with um, a stock-based or, or a broth-based soup. Um, I would definitely keep it um, at temperature. I would keep it in a crock pot. I would keep it plugged in. Um, sometimes they have those um, camping burners that you can use the little gas, um, the little, I don't know what they are. I don't know what they are. I should know, but I can't think of the name right now. But anyway, um, you use those little lights, um, those little um, burners. I don't know if they're Bunsen burners. Uh, I don't know. Don't don't quote me on that one. But you, you put them on little burners to keep them to keep them warm. Okay. The next one is determine what Jasmine can do. She meant to prepare a special mint sauce to serve with her roasted lamb, but she forgot, and she wants to serve some kind of a sauce. So um, what should she do? And this is what I'm going to tell you because um, we we live in the 21st century. I would Google it or I would put it on Pinterest, you know, lamb, you know, sauces to use with lamb. And that answer will come right up and recipes will come right up. Um, I, it's just one of the easiest things to do. It's kind of sad, but I have lots and lots of cookbooks. I am like a cookbook collector, but I don't really use them anymore because I have Pinterest and I have the internet. So hopefully this has helped you. You're done now with week number one. How are you gonna get the grade is you're gonna submit that. You can put it on a Google, a Google Doc, not a Google Gawk. A Google Doc, you could do that. Put all your answers on there and then share it to me. Um, you could do it on a piece of paper and then take a picture of it and send it to Remind. Um, so those are a couple of the answers. But if you get into any problems, and just um, text me on the Remind app. All right. Well, I hope that you, um, I hope this was helpful and I hope that you get week number one done. And I promise in like a day or two, um, I'm going to give you week number two and I'm also going to do some demos. I'm going to see if I can get some help. If I have some people in my house that can maybe help. See you then. Bye.